a laptop designed to not go out of date, better for you and the environment. That's our text to nation. And joining us from Framework is founder and CEO Nirav Patel. Thanks for taking the time with us. Thanks, Fred. It's great to be here. Well, give us the overview of what Framework is doing. Sounds really different. Sure, definitely. We're really treating consumer electronics products as <clears throat> as objects in an ecosystem rather than as these sort of uh, you know transactional one-off items. And the goal there is really to think through ways we can extend longevity of consumer electronics beyond what would normally be possible in products in the market. So describe for us more fully what you have. You, you have a, a site online, frame.work, where people can order laptops that are that are very different really do it yourself configure but not necessarily the way maybe i used to do it with a lot of teeny tiny screws and a soldering iron that's right so our first product is the framework laptop and it's a thin light high performance notebook it looks and feels from you know normal day-to-day -day use like any other premium ultrabook would and that was really the core of it for us. We're sort of taking the best advancements in the notebook space that have enabled these, you know, very thin and light and high performance products, but then also brought in the best that, you know, you and I have experienced from, you know, the old school desktop PC world, where you have that ability to fully configure every part of the machine, customize it to suit your needs exactly, and then be able to upgrade and repair it anytime you'd like. But you're doing it in a way that makes it simple. So let's let's describe for people. I don't know if you have one handy. But yeah, let's sure. Just, let's describe for people what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see just uh, you know from a foot away, it looks like any other thin and light premium notebook. You know, nice aluminum, host consumer recycled material, um, and it's about as thin and light as a 13 inch MacBook Pro. But then the, the similarities sort of disappear as soon as you get past that uh, sort of surface level evaluation. You can see that actually. All of the ports on the machine are these little bays. So this has all four bays unpopulated, but consumers, when they configure the machine at order time, can actually choose from a range of different ports and then be able to, you know, slot them into place, choosing whichever side they'd like, and then change them at any point they'd like to, to be able to, you know, meet their peripheral needs without having to go and get dongles and adapters and so on. Uh, and then beyond that as well, getting to the internals of the machine, we've made it incredibly easy to open up and be able to replace parts inside of, even for someone who's never seen the inside of consumer electronics product or let alone a PC. And so it's just five fasteners. I'd already loosened them to, uh, to take the keyboard off. And we actually include a screwdriver in the box, which is the only tool that's needed to do any repair or upgrade on the machine. And then as you get inside of it, you can see that everything's just a single layer. Nothing's kind of buried behind anything else. And we've labeled everything clearly with the name of what the module is along with a QR code. And so you can actually scan that QR code with your phone and get taken to a page to be able to buy a replacement or upgrade part or find recycling information or step-by-step -step repair guides and so on. And really trying to make it as accessible as possible for people who are maybe not as familiar with the PC space. And this has been a difficult if not impossible task with many thin and light notebooks before. And the interest, yeah, and the interesting thing with that is that, you know, we're a company that's a year and a half old, a little over a year and a half old, where, you know, less than 20 people still at this point. And so it's, it's not that it's technically impossible. You know, we've done it with a small team with, you know, a small amount of funding in a short amount of time. It's really that other companies just haven't prioritized making this available to consumers, especially over the last few years. Now the ports on the on the sides, they can be pretty much anything you want from a, from a connection to monitors to ports, USB ports, different types of ports, or storage as well. That's right. So we've got USB C, USB A, uh, Display Port, HDMI, uh, micro SD. We have uh, two fifty gig and one terabyte high speed storage expansion cards. Uh, and then we've also actually opened up the uh, the designs and released reference designs and documentation to the community to be able to develop additional cards. The goal there really is to expand that ecosystem and not have it only be us as framework building parts of the product and parts of the ecosystem, but to open that up to third parties and even individual hobbyists to be able to do. And we've seen some really interesting designs coming out already. So tell me how this came about. 
And the, the how did the idea germinate? Sure, really. I mean, it was uh, this, uh, you know, sort of over a decade in consumer electronics, seeing the just degradation sort of, of of consumer rights when it comes to being able to really own your product. Um, you know, with these, these devices, phones and tablets and laptops are getting increasingly advanced and increasingly expensive in many cases, but at the same time, also getting increasingly locked down, both from a hardware and a software perspective, and harder to modify, harder to upgrade and repair. And it was very clear that this was not a trend that was going to reverse itself on its own. Really, the, the only way we'd be able to reverse it is by going and building products that are you know, great products, but operate in a better model that really respects consumer rights and respects the environment. Terrific. Now, where does pricing start? Are people going to have to pay a premium to have this capability? Right. That was one of the, the clear goals from us from the beginning was uh, really avoiding a scenario where consumers would have to pay a premium for longevity. We really wanted to make it a clear, obvious choice that getting the longer lasting product would be the right choice without having to pay more from the start. And so uh, the laptop with a uh, i5, um, you know, Tiger Lake processor, Intel's 11th gen, the latest they have, um, eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD is 999, which is more or less on par with any other premium uh, notebook of the same specs. What about the, the graphics capability? Uh, that's not really interchangeable or, or is it? So we use, uh, I mean, it, one nice thing actually about, uh, you know, the latest platforms, actually both from Intel and AMD is that the graphics performance of integrated uh, graphics has, has improved quite a lot. So Intel's latest XE graphics um, actually does allow for, you know, a lot of common titles like, you know, Overwatch or G GTA 5 or other games like that to be able to run at, you know, 60 frames per second. Um, but it is ultimately a thin and light notebook. Like we really prioritize getting to portability um, and, you know, uh, you know, reducing the, the weight and the thickness of this machine. So we don't have a discrete GPU in here, uh, but basically the, uh, the entire main board is actually upgradable by the end user to get to a new CPU platform, which would then, you know, carry along with it, the newer integrated GPU platforms. Interesting. What about the battery? Because sometimes it's the battery that degrades uh, over time with, with a notebook. Right, absolutely, and that that is one of the core things that uh, is, is you know maybe one of the most frustrating things because we've all experienced this. We all have these you know very advanced, expensive devices where maybe every part of it works fine, but because we've used it for you know a year or two every day, the battery life is degrading, and you're just stuck with this you know very expensive thing with a very simple problem. And so we made sure that replacing the battery was one of the easiest things to do. And so after you open it up, you can see there's just three fasteners, uh, again, using that same screwdriver that ships in the box that you loosen and take the battery out and then drop in a new one and plug it in. In addition to the 999 uh, starting point, uh, step us through the different models that, that you offer and what the differences are. Yeah, definitely. So in addition to those pre-built machines that just come with Windows 10, you, you know, take them out of the box, press the power button, and it boots up like any other laptop that you'd order. We also have what we call the Framework Laptop DIY Edition. And this is actually a little bit more like a desktop PC model, uh, kind of a hybrid between a, a notebook and a desktop PC model, where it's a, a bare bones configuration where you get the machine with the main board pre-installed, you select which main board you'd like, and then you can get to bring your own storage and memory and Wi-Fi and choose your operating system. So if you prefer, um, you know, let's say Ubuntu or Fedora or another Linux distribution, you can just choose that right from day one without having a Windows installation that you're not going to use. Really, really interesting. And it, it's, it's almost mind boggling that nobody's really done this right. before. Yeah. The, the, need is, the need is so great. Do you know uh, how much you're going to help the environment uh, with, with a product like this? There's an awful lot of uh, computers going into junk piles. That's right. And so the goal for us really is to double the length of time that a consumer can use a notebook. And most importantly, to have that entire length of time be, be what we call happy years, basically years where you are getting the performance that you'd like out of the notebook, that there's nothing that's flaky, there's nothing that you kind of have to suffer through, that it's just working great during that entire period of time. And so basically we're, we're trying to cut that total new laptop uh, you know, quantity in half. Uh, and in doing so, 
uh, basically cut in half the environmental impact, both on, you know, the, uh, the resource extraction side of things and the manufacturing side of things, but also in that waste at the end of life that needs to be handled in a responsible way. Now you're, you're out there at a time when uh, the supply chain has been disrupted for so many companies. I assume you're, you're affected by that too. So tell us about the impact. Um, yeah, it's been a challenging year to launch a new product in without a doubt, you know, for big companies as well as small companies. And for us, we have a great supply chain team and we've got a great set of partners. And so we've been able to still make it out uh, into the world with the product, uh, you know, on time this year. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we're operating a batch system. So we take pre-orders and we just make sure that we, you know, size our batches in a way that we have high confidence that we're able to get the necessary material to, uh, to be able to manufacture and fulfill that batch. Um, and it, you know, we, we're still in a, a back order right now. Like if you go to the website today, I think, um, you know, the earliest you'll get machine would be sometime in November. Um, and, you know, we would definitely like to get out of that mode and be able to have inventory where people can, you know, just buy a laptop and get it, you know, two days later. Um, it's just taking a bit longer because of how constrained things are. For more info, where do people go? People can go to frame.work. Just like it sounds, F-R-A-M-E dot work. Nirav Patel, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thanks, Fred. <laughs>